Her slaves were depicted as stark naked, chained to the wall and their eyes gouged out, and their fingernails pulled off by the roots. Others had their joints skinned and festering, and there were great holes in their buttocks where the flesh had been sliced away, their ears hanging by shreds, and their lips sewn together. Intestines were even pulled out and knotted around naked waists. As for the man with a hole in his skull, a rough stick had been inserted into the hole to stir the brains. These facts have been exaggerated grossly as it kept Madame Lalaurie fresh in the minds of readers. However, it wasn't the full truth. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I take historic individuals we read about and recreate them to see how they might have looked in real life. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more recreations and let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Madame Lalaurie was born in 1787 to a founding family of Louisiana. They had a lot of money and a lot of power, and in the pre-Civil War South, it meant slaves. However, her treatments don't seem to be as racially motivated as they were psychotically motivated. All of this began after she married her third husband when she was middle-aged in her 40s. With her first husband she married, they had a child at the age of 14. Then he died and she was widowed at 21, so she married a second husband, a businessman, where she had three more daughters and a son. And in 1818, age 31, she was widowed a second time, so 10 years later when she was 41, she married for a third time. Between 1818 and 1828, not a breath of scandal touched her name. A gentle and courteous woman, being a Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde was the last thing anyone would have thought of her. There was nothing to suggest Madame Lalaurie hated slaves per se. You see, she had freed multiple of her slaves in the past. Her second husband did the same thing, and she even had cousins of mixed race. And far from distancing herself from them, as many in her position would, she seemed to get involved with them, even acting as a godmother during their christenings. Her own mixed race half-sister inherited $5,000 and two slaves of her own upon their father's death, and instead of contesting it, Madame Lallerie gave her another slave as demonstration of their affection. So as I said, all of this started with her third husband. In her two-story townhouse on Royal Street, New Orleans, she began to carve out a reputation as a society hostess, and almost immediately after her marriage, rumors began. These rumors could have been three things. Number one, jealousy. Or number two, trying to bring her power down a notch, since Louisiana was recently sold from the French to the Americans, and she was part of that original French elite. Or number three, the rumors were simply true. We do know that there was a law that forbade excessive cruelty towards slaves, but we also know that it was often ignored. April 10th, 1834, the smoke was black and thick. A fire erupted in her home on Royal Street. As rescuers broke down the door to the attic, they initially found two women, one wearing an iron collar, very large and heavy, and chained with heavy irons by the feet, who walked with great difficulty. Elsewhere, they came across an elderly lady lying on the bed with a deep wound in her head. In all, the rescuers discovered seven slaves, four women, two men, and one unspecified gender. Their limbs apparently stretched and torn from one extremity to the other. According to the newspaper, all were covered with scars and loaded with chains, and they had all been imprisoned for several months and were extremely malnourished. Stretchers bore the victims to the city hall where they were laid out in public view. Apart from being starved, confined, and scarred, many of the victims had untreated, open, maggot-infested wounds. One man, according to the newspaper, even had a large hole in his head. To avoid prosecution, Madame Lalaurie fled. Some say to France, others say she stayed in New Orleans under a new name. Intense feeling was a testament to the shock and outrage of the general public at the treatment of her slaves. However, the facts alone did not serve that anger for long as they were soon embellished and exaggerated in books written about her. So what happened? Some say she was suffering from mental illness as she lashed out at those who bore silence and vulnerability, her slaves. She was 41 when she married her third husband who was in his late 20s, which was okay until he began to stay away on business meetings more and more often. So she even tried to get a divorce. Perhaps it was suspected that some of her female slaves replaced her in her husband's affections. It certainly would explain the high number of young women to disappear from Madame Lalaurie's slave list during her final marriage. Maybe as a psychopathic trait, she didn't understand what she was doing wrong, or perhaps it was safest to see Madame Lalaurie as a product of her times, albeit one who stepped over the line. That line, however, was not subjecting her slaves to excessive cruelty, 
rather it was the mistake of getting caught. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more recreations, check out my other videos on my channel and subscribe. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions and I will see you in the next one.